united with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation of Life Christian Broadcasting Television. And now, United with Christ. Well, hello again. Hello, hello. Welcome to uh, United with Christ. It is a wonderful, wonderful day here in studio at KSCE uh, TV uh, Christian uh, Station, uh, Channel 38, and we are so happy that you're joining us uh, this morning. Uh, my name is Pastor Jesse. I am the senior pastor of Cornerstone Church here in El Paso, Texas, way far east uh, in El Paso, 12400 Montwood Drive. Uh, united with Christ, we are just so excited that you're with us. If you have someone and you know someone that needs prayer, please go ahead and call us at 915-532-8518. Also, invite them to join us uh, to be uh, on, on this program or on other programs. We have a lot of great programming here at this station. Uh, wanted to go ahead and continue with uh, the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is just so amazing. And the Bible tells us, uh, we're, we're starting uh, now, the Bible tells us in Matthew, the gospel according to Matthew, chapter 6, verse 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything shall be added unto you. It's about seeking first the kingdom. Yes, school is important, work is essential, it's needed, but seeking the kingdom of God is something that you and I need to do so that we can get our purpose in life, our destiny in life, so we can live a life uh, in abundance and live a life that God is desiring, uh, desiring for us to have. Uh, if you recall, last time that we were together, I had mentioned that God's purpose in the beginning was to establish a family of spiritual sons and spiritual daughters, not servants. Even though it's a kingdom, it's to establish sons and daughters for his honor and for his glory. We talked about uh, establishing a kingdom of kings and priests, not subjects, because in a worldly kingdom or in a kingdom uh, governed by man, it's usually subjects. Oh, but I am so thankful and I'm so excited that his kingdom is a kingdom of kings and priests. It's a kingdom where you and I get to serve the king of kings and the Lord of lords. He came also to extend his kingdom, his heavenly government to earth. And we'll talk about it a little bit more as we move on. And he came to establish a commonwealth of citizens and not religious members. It's not about religion. It's about relationship. And so that's what the kingdom of God is. Yes, there are a lot of great things that you and I do, but if we lose the focus on God's word, then we've lost our focus on seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Uh, and it's also to establish uh, uh, his, his focus was to bring heaven to earth. And, and that's what the kingdom is about. A religion focuses on heaven and the kingdom focuses on earth. And also religion seeks to take earth to heaven, but the kingdom of God and his kingdom is to, is to seek to bring heaven to earth. And that's why we're reminded of that, of that scripture that says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth just as it is in heaven. And so our key text is a summary of the entire chapter of uh, chapter 6. If you read, if you take time to read chapter 6, you will see that it culminates uh, with that we need to seek first the things of God. 
And so therefore, our priorities need to be aligned. And sometimes our priorities uh, and situations and life itself can take us to different places and can deviate us or cause us to pause. But, and, and, and a lot of times it causes us to stop. But you and I need to know that the kingdom of God is so, so important in your life and in my life. And I'm reminded of the scripture where it says, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. In other words, the kingdom of God is not coming. The kingdom of God is here. And we have seen uh, in this world, we have seen the mighty hand of God move like never before. And that's what we're praying. And that's when he said, when the disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray. And, and the Lord says, you know what, when you uh, pray to your father in heaven, go ahead and pray this manner. And so, you, uh, and, and, and so they be, he began to go ahead and, 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 and just outline and give him a guide uh, of how to pray. And in that particular guide, in that particular prayer, he said, thy kingdom come. That's what we desire for God's power, for God's love, for God's purpose to come upon each and every household, upon each and every uh, leader of every nation, of every tongue and tribe. And that is what we, we are desiring. So the kingdom is not coming. The kingdom is here. And so therefore, we need to repent. Repent. Because the kingdom of God is at hand. And I'm so thankful that when we're united with Christ, it means that we have repented. And my friend, if you are watching and you have not repented, repenting, it just basically means to have a change of mind, a change of heart. If you don't change your mind, you are not able to access the kingdom of God and to access the benefits that are within the kingdom. So until your mind is transformed, you will not be able to understand, you will not be able to comprehend uh, who God is and what God is doing. And so we're just so excited because uh, the redeemed of the Lord can say so, that he has changed me, he has transformed me, he has placed my feet the uh, upon the rock of my salvation. And I'm just so excited that I get to serve in the kingdom of God, to serve not only the king of kings, but I get to serve uh, the body of Christ like you and those that don't know about the kingdom. In Matthew chapter 13, Jesus tells one parable after another parable. And people were having a hard time comprehending what uh, the each parable meant. The more he went through the parables, the more uh, they were bewildered, they were per, uh, perplexed, they, they didn't fully understand. And so the disciples looked at Jesus and, and said, what are you saying, Lord? And in scripture, it tells us that uh, to you, these things have been revealed. Another version in the ESV version, it says, to you, these secrets have been unfolded, but to them, it's been hidden. Because in order to perceive the things of God, you and I need the spirit of the Lord, which I refer to as the Holy Ghost, because I, I, I prefer the older translation, but there's nothing wrong. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, same thing. But you need the spirit of God because the spiritual things are perceived uh, by the spirit. And the natural things are perceived by the natural. And you, will not, you and I will never be able to perceive the things of the spirit with our five senses. With our sense of uh, smell and sight and hearing and taste and touch. We won't. Because those are temporal. Those are limited. When you and I uh, cease to exist on this earth, uh, those will also cease to exist. And so it's important to perceive spiritual things in the spirit. As the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 8, you have to repent. Salvation is one thing, 
but the kingdom of God is another. And they, go, they do go hand in hand. You can be saved and still not be walking in the kingdom. You cannot, uh, if you don't understand, truly understand what the precepts are and what the things of the kingdom are, that's when life barely begins when you say yes to the Lord and no to the world. Then you begin to experience as you walk in the kingdom, the, 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 the benefits that the Lord has for you and I and for others, for those that don't know. So if you do not know God, you have an opportunity to know him today by saying yes to the kingdom, by saying yes and seeking first the kingdom of God and his, and his righteousness. Because you can see to the left, to the right, you can look everywhere. This nation, every other nation, uh, there's a lot of unrighteousness going on. But the righteousness of God is light. The righteousness of God is truth. The righteousness of God is the way. And so, again, I'm, that, that scripture that said, Lord, teach us to pray. Our Father with art, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth, just as it is in heaven. So once you're saved, you need to walk according to the precepts, the principles, or the characteristics of the kingdom. And when you're baptized in the Holy Ghost, in the Holy Spirit, you are living and operating in the kingdom of God. When you are baptized in water, you must start talking the way they talk in the kingdom and praying kingdom prayers. And so that's why in your natural, you can say, oh, I'm so weak. Uh, I'm, I'm weak, but no, you need to, the scripture tells us, let the weak say, I am strong. And so they have to be kingdom prayers, kingdom prayers that I am blessed in the city and I am blessed in the field. I'm blessed when I get up. I'm blessed when I go to bed. I'm blessed while I'm driving and the angels of the Lord, according to Psalm chapter 34, will protect me wherever I go. Yes, we believe in angels. And so it's so, so important in order for, in order to have a kingdom, we must have a king and we do have a king. Aren't you glad that you have a king? Bible tells us in Psalm chapter 10, verse 16, the Lord is king forever and ever. Bible tells us in Psalm 47, uh, verse seven, for God is king over all the earth. He's king over all the earth. And he's permitting some of these things to happen. Why does God allow this? And why does God, if God is love? No, no, we do not go there because God is sovereign. And man is a fallen nature. But he, he has come to redeem us. But a lot of people don't want redemption. In Isaiah chapter 43, verse 15. I am the Lord, Israel's creator and Israel's king. Then another scripture that I wanted to share with you in Jeremiah chapter 10. God is everlasting king. And so a, the kingdom of God has a king and a king sits on his throne. He is so big and so vast, so powerful that he's on his throne and he can become so small that he abides and he dwells in my heart and your heart. And that's what he's wanting to do with uh, individuals that do not know him. Maybe you're going through stuff and maybe you're going through situations right now. And maybe you're saying, Pastor Jesse, I don't know. I'm struggling. I'm going hard. Give him. Uh, uh, it's, it's a bit hard for me. Give him an opportunity, my friend. And I'm telling you because the king or the prince, actually not a king, he wants to be a king, but he's actually a prince. The prince of this world has come. He's like a roaring lion seeking who he can devour. He's come to steal. He's come to kill. And he's come to destroy. But John, uh, in the gospel according to John, chapter 10, verse 10 says, But I have come 
that you may have a life and a life in abundance, more abundantly. If you want to experience the kingdom of God, we invite you to be with us, united with Christ, to accept the kingdom of God. It's expanding. And it is, I'm telling you, I have, I once was lost, but now I'm saved. And so I thank the Lord for that. And so a king sits on his throne, but he abides everywhere. He is everywhere right now. He is on all seven continents. He is in heaven. He's in, in the heavenlies, in the, in, 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 and he's everywhere. He is that awesome. He is that great. He is that powerful and that loving. Scripture tells us in Isaiah, heaven is his throne and earth is his footstool. Isn't that powerful? That he sits, if you were to get a mental picture, he sits in the heavenlies. Not this layer here, which we know as the sky, but the other layer, which is way, way out there. Uh, he sits there and his feet will dangle and it's his footstool. That is, that is the God that you and I are serving. That is the God that you and I love and we thank him and he hears our prayers and we're just so excited to be part of the kingdom. He is the king of kings and Lord of lords. And so the power of the king, uh, uh, the, the, the word kingdom actually, um, uh, or, or I'm sorry, the word uh, kingdom come also has to do with word, the word, okay? And so in Ecclesiastes, where the word of the king is, there is power. I love that because that's what we need to pray. We need to pray God's word. We need to speak God's word. We need to believe God's word. Some individuals don't believe God's word. But when you and I have God's word, and when we get God's word in our spirit, there's no telling what God can do. And so when you believe, you receive. Scripture even tells us in Romans, you call those things that are not as though they were. Believing those things and saying, you know what, right now I may be in this situation, right now this may be the circumstances, but I know that, that, that God is going to be with me. Yes, right now I'm walking through a valley and it seems like a valley of shadow of death. It may be that death is lurking all around, but no, you keep moving, you keep walking in that valley because after the valley, a mountaintop experience will come. And I pray that you will experience that in your life. And so where the word of the king is, there is power. So Jesus said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, just as it is in heaven. Ain't nobody sick in heaven, so you should not be sick. And you can go ahead and declare God's word and say, you know what? In Isaiah chapter 53, it says that by your stripes, I'm healed. And you believe for your healing and you receive your healing. The fact is you may be in pain right now, but the truth is that he is Christ the healer. And also in Exodus chapter uh, I believe it's 15, verse 26, where it says, For I am the Lord that healeth thee. In the Old Testament, they would call him Jehovah Rapha, which is the healer. Jehovah the healer. What is the kingdom? What is the kingdom? The kingdom is made up of two words, king and domain. In other words, the king's domain, the domain of a king. Wherever the king is, his kingdom is there, and he has domain. He has dominion. He has power over that. And so I believe that, that, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so I want that your faith will, will grow. 
uh, that if you had no faith before, that you would have some faith. And if you have some faith, you would have little faith. And if you have, and that it grows, that if you already have faith, that your faith will be great faith like that Roman centurion. And so that's why we believe here at United with Christ that it's important to learn about the attributes, the characteristics, the principles of the kingdom, because they are some powerful, powerful insight on what God has for you and I. And so let me go ahead and continue that everything a king rules is called his dominion or his territory. God governs over territories. God governs over entities. God governs over human beings, those that are pliable, those that will say, yes, Lord, those that will say, God, not my will, but yours be done, Lord. Let your will be done in me. Use me for your honor. Use me for your glory. And I'm telling you, I firmly believe that we all have a ministry. We all have a ministry. We all can have a testimony. Uh, whether uh, you've, you've experienced and you've lived in sin or darkness, I'm telling you, you can experience the light. And those of you that are watching me, you have experienced the light. You have experienced a conversion and a transformation. And we're just so excited that God is, uh, has done that for you. But we're believing for God's kingdom in this last hour. Because let me tell you, friends, we are in the last hour. Okay, we're in living in the 70th week of Daniel. 69 weeks have gone by, and we're living in the prophetic week of, of 70. It, it, it's, about, it's about to start. We don't know if it'll be a, a, a month, a year, a decade, or, or more, but we are living... Uh, you see the signs of the times. And so it's important to know about the kingdom. The earth is the Lord's, the Bible says, and all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein, Psalm 24. And so he rules over sickness, over poverty, over oppression, over depression, over uh, every, every uh, thing that can come in contrary to the word of God. And he is sovereign over the prince of this world who seeks to spread his own kingdom of darkness to counteract the kingdom of God, which represents light. Scripture tells us in Revelation, there will come a time when the seventh trumpet will sound. And scripture tells us, and it says, kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of the our Lord. That's Revelations chapter 11. So the physical realm is subject to change, but the spiritual realm is not subject to change. Everything is subject to change but the kingdom will never change. His kingdom will never. Uh, if you remember in previous uh, sessions before or, or in this programming, we talked about Isaiah chapter 9. For unto us a child is born and unto us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the prince of peace, of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. As a matter of fact, there is no subject to change. It just gets better. So I pray today that you will experience his kingdom in your life, in your family, at your home church, at the congregation, that you go from strength to strength, from glory to glory, and you will experience the almighty God increasing. It says, uh, of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. And scripture finishes there in Isaiah chapter 9, 
upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, there will be no end. Aren't you excited about that? Aren't you excited that that the kingdom of God does not have an end? And so kingdoms don't have memberships. Like you and I may have a membership to a certain business or or, or a certain uh, uh, place. You cannot become a member. You only become a citizen. As, as citizens, we are not uh, just residents. But the Bible says that we're kings and we're priests under the authority of Christ. Look at what scripture says here in Revelations chapter 1, beginning with verse 5. Jesus is the firstborn from the dead and ruler over the kings of the earth. And then it finishes by saying, he has made us kings and priests. That means we're royalty. We're sanctified. We're redeemed. And uh, in Exodus chapter 19, you shall be to me a kingdom of priests. That tells us also that you and I should, should not act like, like, like everyone else because we're children of the light. We have truth. We have been redeemed. The veil has been removed and we've experienced the power of God, the glory of God. We know that Jesus is the way. We know that Jesus is truth and we know that Jesus is life. And so we're just, Again, excited that that's how you and I should walk accordingly to the things and to the characteristics of the kingdom. Well, my time is about to expire. Wow, time flies. And I want you to know uh, that um, I'm excited because I believe that you have received something uh, today here at United with, with Christ. Again, we invite you to continue to join us. We invite you to see other programming because we have some amazing programming. Amazing. This ministry is a great ministry with great people having a great God. And so I'm Pastor uh, Jesse Medina uh, from Cornerstone Church in El Paso. We love God and love people and we love you. And again, if you have any prayer requests, call us here and there will be someone uh, to take your phone call and to take your prayer requests or your victory reports, okay? Until next time, united with Christ, God bless you. We love you.